Good evening, everyone. The January 16th, 2024 legislative session of the Anne Arundel County Council is called to order. Please ensure all phones and electronic devices are set to silence. I'm surprised to see such a crowd tonight on uh, such a very, very cold night. Uh, it is my turn to lead the council in invocation. Please stand. May we listen to one another intently with the purpose of bettering ourselves and our community. May we humbly accept the responsibilities assigned to us. May we carry out each of these responsibilities to the best of our capabilities. And the pledge. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Secretary, please read the ethics statement. The Ethics Commission has asked that I advise you that under certain circumstances, members of the public may qualify as lobbyists when they testify before the County Council. If so, the law requires that certain information be filed with the Ethics Commission. The Chair of the Ethics Commission has asked that those who wish to testify in any form review the general information on lobbying sheet located on the Ethics website under Forms and Publications. If there are questions about lobbying requirements, please contact the Ethics Commission at 410-222-4413. Thank you. We will now open our invitation to audience. This is an opportunity to speak briefly on any subject not included on the printed agenda. Madam Secretary, did we receive any testimony through the online testimony tool? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the council, we did receive a few submissions. Uh, two of the, one of those was definitely for the invite to audience and two were more directed towards legislation and will be counted at that time. Thank you. We will now call on individuals who signed up ahead of the meeting. When your name is called, please come up to the table and state your name and address for the record before making your remarks. Remarks will be limited to two minutes. We have two people signed up to speak, Ms. Kate Thomas and Kurt Svensson. Mr. Atkinson, do you have something to share at invitation to audience? Yes, thank you. Not on the printed agenda, correct? That is correct. Okay. Hmm. Mr. Svensson, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, Kurt Svensson, Arnold, Maryland. Um, I need to call attention to how county government directly contributes to the problem of housing affordability for essential workers with low and moderate incomes who have achieved home ownership but struggle to maintain it. To illustrate, I'm gonna share a story of an essential worker that I recently met. Jane Doe is a 62-year-old widow. Nearly 30 years ago, she and her husband bought a modest home on the edge of a residential community in North County. Built in the 40s, this 1,000 square foot detached home with three bedrooms and one and a half baths now has a taxable value of $250,000 $180,000 after applying her homestead tax credit. Jane qualifies for about $11,000 per year in spousal survivor's benefits. To supplement this, she works 10 months a year, about 30 hours a week, at $20 an hour. Since this $26,000 exceeds the annual earning limit, Social Security withholds one for every $2 earned over that limit. So Jane's annual gross income is $35,000. Her property tax bill is $1,764 and consumes 5% of her income, significantly higher than the median property tax burden. Jane is eligible for the county's homeowner's property tax credit program, but due to the restrictive provisions of that county program, when you plug her data into the formula, it yields a credit of zero. If the county's program was adjusted as I proposed last year, see my written testimony, Jane would qualify for an $889 credit and her property tax bill of $875 would represent 2.5% of her income. 
that's much more in line with the median property tax burden in this county. Thank you. Mr. Atkinson. Good evening. Uh, I'm, for the record, I'm O'Brien Atkinson, president of the local Fraternal Order of Police, representing our Anne Arundel County police officers. Um, as I'm sure you're all aware, our department is struggling with our staffing. Uh, you know the difficulty our agency has had hiring police officers, and for years the FOP has been fighting to address this problem, and we appreciate the bipartisan help from this council on that measure. We wish we could be as thankful for the various administrations and their support, but month after month, year after year, administration after administration, we find ourselves coming up short. By the county's own estimation, we are some 340 officers short of where we should be. That is a 30% shortage. The police department and our recruiters are trying desperately to fill that gap, but our staffing continues to fall, and eventually services will be cut. The county office personnel tells us that they're trying to help, but to them, we are just one of 11 bargaining groups that they have to deal with. We looked to the county's website under how to apply to be a police officer, and it said, we are no longer accepting applications for entry-level police officers. And I know this council fought hard to get more positions into the budget, and we certainly do appreciate that. Our, over, our severely understaffed, struggling Anne Arundel County Police Department is not hiring entry-level police officers. It took the FOP raising this issue multiple times to get at least the message changed to advertise when it opens back up. This is not new. Uh, last time our agency did a promotional spot on the local news directing people to our website which again said we are no longer accepting applications. We've told the county that there is no reason to close the hiring process even for a moment, but over and over again, the administration has stymied our ability to hire police officers and that we desperately need. Thank you for adding the positions to the budget, but for now, we're not accepting applicants for entry level officers. We, we feel that needs to change. Thank you. Thank you. If there is anyone here who wishes to speak, plum, come, please come up to the table and state your name and address and topic before making your remarks. Remarks will be limited to two minutes. Is there anyone else in the audience looking to speak at invitation to audience? Seeing no movement, the invitation to audience is now closed. Is there any item any council member would like to place on the agenda this evening? Seeing none, may I have a motion that the partial reading of any bill, resolution, amendment to a bill or resolution, or minutes constitutes the reading of a whole? Rodby and so moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. Madam Secretary, please read the minutes of January 2nd, 2024. Minutes of January 2nd, 2024. The County Council meeting was called to order by Chair Pickard at 7 p.m. It was opened with the invocation given by Mr. Smith and was followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. The meeting was held in the County Council Chambers in Annapolis, Maryland. May I have a motion to approve the minutes of January 2nd, 2024? Radby and so moved. Is there second. a second? Oh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries. The minutes of January 2nd, 2022, 2024 stand approved as read. Madam Secretary, please read the titles of the bills to be introduced this evening. Bill number 424, an ordinance concerning personnel. Bill number 524, an ordinance concerning current expense budget, Board of Education, supplementary appropriation and transfer of funds. Madam Secretary, please read the titles of the resolutions to be introduced this evening. Resolution number 224, resolution concerning a petition to the Maryland Higher Education Commission for Anne Arundel County Community College funding. Resolution number 324, resolution amending certain portions of titles 1, 3, 4, and 5 of the Rules of Procedure of the County Council. Resolution number 424, resolution amending certain sections of Title II of the Rules of Procedure of the County Council. Madam Chair, may I request to be added as a co-sponsor to resolution number 3-24? Actually, I guess that's to you, <laughs> Madam Administrative Officer. So noted, Ms. Rodvian, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Secretary. 
Please read the title of Bill Number 84-23. Bill number 8423, an ordinance concerning subdivision and development, zoning, boards, commissions, and similar bodies, finance, taxation, and budget, public works, Odenton Town Center, Odenton Town Center, master plan. This is an administration bill. Mr. Hunt, when you gather your, your team, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Ethan Hunt for the administration. With me at the table, I have Mark Wildonger from the Office of Planning and Zoning and Kelly Kenny from the Office of Law. This bill has been discussed a number of times at prior um, hearings and uh, work session. And I know there are some amendments to discuss, so we're here to answer any questions and talk about the amendments. Is there any discussion from my colleagues before we move right into amendments? Seeing none. Well, I guess we could open up the public hearing. We should do that. <laughs> we'll now open up the public hearing on Bill Number 84-24. Uh, Madam Secretary, did we receive any testimony through the online testimony tool? Uh, yes, we did. Madam Chair, members of the council, we received one submission. Everybody here received a copy of that via email, and it is included in the summary that is posted online. It's my understanding we have no one signed up currently to speak on Bill 84-23. If there's anyone in the audience wishing to speak, during this public hearing on Bill 8423, make your intentions known and we'll move forward. Mr. Title? Yes. Madam Chairman. Sir, you have the floor. And everyone else, good evening on this winter night after two years. Um, look, I've been here, worked tirelessly on this bill through um, through the um, various committees that I'm involved with, directly with Julie and with planning and zoning. Um, and all in all, I think it's probably going to be the best it's going to be. However, I still have reservations with the First Amendment regarding roads. I think it's extremely subjective. I think it could create um, a problem, especially properties that are bound by four county roads and might be a smaller parcel that now has to um, improve all sides of the property on behalf of the county. And I just don't think that that is fair. We're trying to create situations where we have some affordable housing, but if you continue to place these various costs that, again, are taxpayer costs, maintaining roads, maintaining schools, things of that nature, we do pay impact, impact fees as developers for impacts for those things. We're being double taxed on this, and I, I, I really, I don't know your backgrounds and what your involvement at all have been in development, but I would love you, the opportunity for you all to sit down and see what's involved in the development, what it costs to build an apartment building or an office building, and what those expenses are to understand exactly the impact. I can't do retail for less than $50 a foot. I can't deliver it. You don't have anybody in the county that can afford that, small businesses. They can't afford that but I can't afford to build it unless I can get those rents and those are nationals. Your apartments that are $4,900 for a two bedroom unit, a lot of it has to do with what we have to do on behalf of the county. Now, with that said, I also think the developers are building too many class A apartment buildings. I really do. Thank and you, sir. I, I think that that's part of the issue too, is they, they need to look inside themselves, but all in all, um, I'm, I'm fairly um, pleased with what the outcome has been. I appreciate the council and planning and zoning working with the community. Thank you, sir. Appreciate Thank you. it. Uh, the public hearing on bill number 84-23 is now closed. Madam Secretary, please read the title of bill number 84-23. Bill number 8423, 
an ordinance concerning subdivision and development, zoning, boards, commissions, and similar bodies, finance, taxation, and budget, public works, Odenton Town Center, Odenton Town Center, master plan. Madam Secretary, please read amendment number 11. Thank you. Amendment number 11. This amendment allows business complexes as a permitted use and business complexes with auxiliary use as a conditional use in the historic village mix block. Ms. Hummer, this is your amendment. Yes, and before I go into that, I do want to, um, Mr. Title has been here every week and I want to thank him. Um, this bill is a better bill because he has been involved in very um, instrumental in getting it where it is. We disagree on this one amendment, but um, I've told him I will keep a careful eye on it to have there, and I really appreciate his input on everything. So, but for Amendment 11, um, this is now allowing in the historic village mix um, business complexes. It involves, we have a property there that already meets the definition of a business complex, and so this is just adding that in so that to an an existing use that's already in place. So, and I um, ask for your support, my motion to adopt. Is there a second? Rod, be in second. The administration. As always, I want to thank the sponsor for working with the Office of Planning and Zoning and the Office of Law on these amendments, and we would urge the council to adopt it. Is there any discussion? Ms. Rodvian? Thank you. I just wanted to ask Council Member Hummer what uh, particular property so there is um, one, uh, an owner who owns some adjacent lots to each other that currently have, um, there's a pit barbecue place and a hardware place and a contractor. And so they're adjacent uh, parcels that already have a mix of businesses there. Thank you. So. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, Please call the roll on amendment number 11. Ms. Hummer. Aye. Mr. Volke is absent this evening. Ms. Fiedler. Aye. Ms. Rodvian. Aye. Ms. Ledbetter. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. And Ms. Pickard. Aye. Six in the affirmative, one absent. Amendment number 11 has been adopted. <sighs> Madam Secretary, please read amendment number 12. Amendment number 12, this amendment adds certain definitions and modifies the definition of transit-oriented development policy area in the Odenton Town Center Master Plan. Ms. Hummer, this is also your amendment. You have the floor. Yes, this one's kind of self-explanatory. We're just um, expanding on some definitions in the glossary of the plan, and we're also um, modifying the, the definition of transit-oriented development policy area to um, match the state definition of that as well. So I ask for your support and move to adopt. Is there a second? Radby and second. The administration have? We support this amendment and would urge the council to adopt it. Is there any further discussion? Madam Secretary, please call the roll on amendment number 12. Ms. Hummer. Aye. Mr. Volke is absent. Ms. Fiedler. Aye. Ms. Radvian. Aye. Ms. Ledbetter. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. And Ms. Pickard. Aye. Six in the affirmative, one absent. Amendment number 12 has been adopted. Madam Secretary, please read amendment number 13. Amendment number 13, this amendment changes the proposed future zoning district from OTCWC, West Core, to OTCT, Transition, and changes the configuration of the future zoning for the properties located on tax map 0021, grid 0022, parcels 0170, 0436, 0168, 0169, 0189, and 0498, known as 1421 through 1452 Odenton Road, Odenton, revises the applicable maps accordingly and removes references to moving the southern section of the OTCT into the OTCWC zoning district. So, Summer. <laughs> did everybody get all that? Did you got all that? So this is um, within the Odenton master plan. There are a number of small districts that are designed, and many of them, it's, they have special designations and um, permissible uses depending on the 
um, proximity to the train station and for the transit oriented development. This is just moving one property into the transit from the west core to the transition area. It just allows some different uses. It's an existing property that's been there for a long time that has been using this and um, I ask for your support. So um, I move the so moved. What, move the motion. What you know? Y'all know what I'm saying. Motion to adopt. Motion to adopt. There Is we there go. a second? Rodney and second. Mr. Hunt. We would urge the council to adopt this amendment as well. Is there any discussion on this amendment? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, please call the roll on amendment number thirteen. Uh, Ms. Hummer. Aye. Mr. Volke is absent. Ms. Fiedler. Aye. Ms. Rodvian. Aye. Ms. Ledbetter. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. And Ms. Pickard. Aye. Six in the affirmative. One absent. Amendment number 13 has been adopted. Okay. Madam Secretary, please read amendment number 14. Amendment number 14. This amendment adds various light industrial uses and one retail and service use as conditional or permitted uses in the OTCT zoning district, establish this, establishes the conditions for the uses, and revises the description of the OTCT zoning district in the Odenton Town Center Master Plan. Ms. Hummer, this is your amendment. You have the floor. This one is coupled with the amendment before. It's just adding in the uses for this property that's moving to the transition area um, for long time uses that have been done on the property. So it's just updating the code to match the previous amendment. So I ask your support and um, motion to adopt. Is there a second? Second. Being second or <laughs> Mr. Smith. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hunt. Uh, we support. Is there any further discussion on this amendment? Mr. Rodman. Oh, I'm sorry. Madam Secretary, please call the roll on amendment number 14. Ms. Hummer. Aye. Mr. Volke is absent. Ms. Fiedler. Aye. Ms. Radvian. Aye. Ms. Ledbetter. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. And Ms. Pickard. Aye. Six in the affirmative. One absent. Amendment number 14 has been adopted. Madam Secretary, please read amendment number 15. Amendment number 15, this technical amendment corrects an erroneous code citation, corrects the names of the current chair and vice chair of the county council in the plan, corrects erroneous map references in the plan, and adds a missed reference to the state for the TOD designated area on map 15, special economic development designations 2023 in the plan. Ms. Hummer, this is your amendment. And this is just the final amendment to do cleanup of all the technical issues that we found as we've made amendments and made changes. Um, so this is the final because we are in favor of correcting typos and things. So um, I ask for your support and um, motion to adopt. Is there a second? Rod being second. Mr. Hunt. Uh, I know the council is very familiar with our stance on typos and we would urge you to uh, adopt this amendment. I assume there's no further discussion. Seeing none, Madam Secretary, please call the roll on amendment number 15. Ms. Hummer. Aye. Mr. Volke is absent. Ms. Fiedler. Aye. Ms. Rodvian. Aye. Ms. Ledbetter. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. And Ms. Pickard. Aye. Six in the affirmative. One absent. Amendment number 15 has been adopted. Thank you. Uh, bill number 84-23 will be heard on February 5th, 2024. Madam Secretary, please read the title of bill number 91-23. Bill number 9123, an ordinance concerning finance taxation and budget, real property taxes, tax credits, public safety officer property tax credit. Um, this is sponsored by the entire council. Uh, is there any uh, discussion on this bill before we open the public hearing on bill 91-23? Happy to have any of my colleagues speak to this uh, public safety tax credit. Okay. We'll now open the public hearing on bill number 91-23. Madam Secretary, did we receive any testimony through the online testimony tool? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, members of the council, we did receive one submission. Everyone here got a copy of that via email, and it is included in the summary that's posted online. 
And at this time, we did not have anybody sign up ahead of time. If there's anyone here who now wishes to speak on bill number 91-23, please come up to the table and have a seat. When it is your turn, please state your name and address for the record. Remarks will be limited to two minutes. If you have more than two minutes to share, I'm going to ask you to submit your additional thoughts using our online testimony tool. Sir? Uh, I'm Victor Henderson, uh, 12 North Jerome Parkway, Glen Burnie, Maryland. Uh, good evening and thank you for allowing me to speak. As I said, I'm Victor Henderson. I'm the president of the Anne Arundel County Volunteer Firefighters Association. I'm here to express my support for the public safety officer property tax credit legislation. Thank you for amending the legislation during your last council session to add in all volunteer members of our volunteer fire companies. All members play a, a valuable role. Our associate, administrative, and auxiliary members contribute not by riding apparatus and responding to emergencies, but by raising money so that those apparatus util utilized by career staffing and volunteer staffing can be purchased. In total, there is fire apparatus valued at over $40 million currently in service that was purchased by volunteer fire companies. The alarmers also provide a vital role in our combination fire service in Anne Arundel County. While they are not riding members, they do respond to fire and police calls of an extended operation to provide beverage and food service and also a rehab station at the scene. Our volunteer fire companies could not survive without the work of all of our members, including our, our firefighters and EMTs, our volunteers that show up every day and work hard, and our alarmers that help so many. I ask you to pass this legislation. Thank you. Mr. Atkinson? Good evening. Uh, again, for the record, my name is O'Brien Atkinson. I'm president of the Anne Arundel County Fraternal Order Police. Uh, and just on behalf of our active and retired members, uh, we have a few uh, here in the audience, if they wouldn't mind just standing up. Um, we just want to thank you for your support and thank you for uh, you know, putting forth this bill. As, as you know, we are in a crisis and everything that you can do to help us is very much appreciated. So thank you. Mr. Svensson. Hi, uh, Kurt Svensson, Arnold, Maryland. I can do math. I know where this bill's headed. Um, I need to point out, though, clearly, and on the public record, the following fact. It is pretty easy to earn at least 50 service points under Section 12.1.305 of the County Code. And in doing so, that person need not put themselves in harm's way. For example, one, under subsection 5, attend two meetings a month, 20 points. Under subsection four, get appointed as a member of a committee, 10 points. Under subsection three, spend four hours twice a month at a station, planning projects, conducting yard and landscaping activities, 20 points. If my math is correct, these three service elements add up to 50 points. Why do we spend so much time and effort expanding the definition of certain job classifications like public safety officer and essential worker while we neglect people in need? For example, a 62-year-old widow working 30 hours a week to pace together an annual income of $35,000 and who is struggling to pay her mortgage and property taxes on the home in which she and her husband raise their family. The auditor's fiscal note on this bill states that it would not impact the property tax revenue collected by the county, but rather would be absorbed by the remaining tax base. You know who's going to absorb the cost of this tax expenditure? That 62-year-old widow I described in testimony at the start of this meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience who'd like to testify on Bill 91-23? Seeing no movement, the public hearing on Bill number 91-23 is now closed. Madam Secretary, please read the title of Bill number 91-23. Bill number 9123, an ordinance concerning finance, taxation, and budget, real property taxes, tax credits, public safety officer property tax credit. Mr. Hunt, did you or your colleagues care to share any information for us tonight? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Just briefly, Ethan Hunt for the administration. With me, I have Brian Shank from the Office of Finance and Kelly Kenny from the Office of Law. Um, I know we've discussed this bill several times, so I won't belabor any more points and just remind the council of the fiscal impact of this bill. Do my colleagues have any questions or comments? Ms. Fiedler. Thank you, Madam Chair. 
Um, I just want to thank the folks who are here tonight in chambers who have served our community, our county. Uh, you've come out multiple nights. I think the reason that you are seeing unanimous support of this bill is because we value what you do every day, what you've done every day, um, and that you put your life on the line to serve the residents of Anne Arundel County. So thank you. Seeing no other lights or comments from my colleagues, um, Madam Secretary, please call the roll on bill number 91-23. Ms. Hummer. Aye. Mr. Volke is absent. Ms. Fiedler. Aye. Ms. Radvian. Aye. Ms. Ledbetter. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. And Ms. Pickard. Aye. Six in the affirmative. One absent. Bill number 9123 has been passed. Madam Secretary, please read the title of Bill number 92-23. Bill number 92-23, an ordinance concerning subdivision and development, zoning, small business districts. This is Ms. Fiedler and Ms. Volke's bill. Ms. Fiedler, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. We've discussed this bill at length. Um, nothing further to add other than there is still, I acknowledge that there is still more work to be done on the bill. I've communicated over the weekend um, an amendment that we passed at our last meeting that I, I do think upon hearing from residents, especially in Ms. Rodvian's district, um, that there's a need to go back and look at a, a particular section of the bill. Um, we, I had intended, um, I think misled better as well, intended on introducing an amendment this evening. We are actually not going to do that tonight. So, uh, a question came up as we were heading out that I feel like we need to clarify before we introduce that, um, knowing there's more work to be done um, at the appropriate time, I will be making a motion to hold. Is there any discussion, my colleagues or Mr. Hunt? No, Madam Chair. We will now open the public hearing on bill number 92-23. Madam Secretary, did we have any testimony from the online testimony tool? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the council, we received about 44 submissions through the two online testimony tools. Everybody here received copies via email. It's included in that summary that's posted online as well. Is there anyone here? We have no one signed up to speak. Is there anyone here in the audience uh, prepared to speak on Bill 9223 at this time? Seeing no movement, we'll close the public hearing on Bill number 92-23. Uh, Madam Secretary, please read the title of Bill number 92-23. Bill number 92-23, an ordinance concerning subdivision and development, zoning, small business districts. Madam Chair. Ms. Fiedler. I'd like to make a motion to hold um, Bill 9223 until our February 5th meeting. Let, let better second. Uh, Madam Secretary, please uh, call the roll on the motion to hold this bill until, I'm sorry, February 5th. Fifth. Ms. Hummer. Nay. Mr. Volke is absent again. Ms. Fiedler. Aye. Ms. Radvian. Nay. Ms. Ledbetter. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. And Ms. Pickard? Nay. Uh, three in the affirmative, three in the negative, and one absent. The motion to hold the vote on Bill number 9223 has failed. This bill is now uh, up for a, a vote of this council. Are, is there any other further discussion on this bill before we take this final vote? Madam Secretary, please call the roll on Bill number 92-23. Uh, Ms. Hummer. Nay. Mr. Volke is absent. Ms. Fiedler. Aye. Ms. Rodvian. Nay. Ms. Ledbetter. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. And Ms. Pickard. Nay. Three in the affirmative, three in the negative, and one absent. Bill number 9223 has been defeated. Madam Secretary, please read the title of Bill number 93-23. Bill number 9323, an ordinance concerning pensions, participation, transferred service, employees retirement plan, fire service retirement plan, police service retirement plan. Thank you. This is an administration bill. Mr. Hunt, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Ethan Hunt for the administration. With me at the table, I have Ann Badowski and Kelly Lovett from the Office of Personnel. 
Ann Sterner from uh, Bolton, who is our actuary, Stephen Thoreau from the um, Office of Budget, and Kelly Kenny from the Office of Law, or sorry, Lori Blair Klossmeyer from the Office of Law. Um, we discussed this bill at the work session last week, um, so just a couple high level points. Um, so this, Bill 9323 allows participants in the Fire Service Retirement Plan and Police Service Retirement Plan hired after, after a certain date to purchase service credit for prior participation in other plans. It adds employees of the Resilience Authority of Annapolis and Anne Arundel County as participants in the Employees Retirement Plan. Uh, it adds employees in certain job classifications as participants in the Fire Service Retirement Plan and it allows participants in both fire and police service retirement plans who terminate employment for less than 12 months to return to participate in the plan, um, provided certain conditions are met, and provides for the, recal the calculation and repayment of contributions to re-enter the plan. Um, I'm happy to turn it over to Anne if she wants to add anything additional. We do have two administration amendments that are before you that we'll discuss at the appropriate time. Ann Podowski, personnel officer. Um, I don't have anything to add, but I'm happy to answer any further questions that weren't raised at the work session. Are there any questions uh, of the panel at this time from my colleagues on Bill 93-23? Seeing none, we'll now open the public hearing on Bill number 93-23. Madam Secretary, did we receive any testimony through the online testimony tool? Uh, no, Madam Chair, we did not receive anything ahead of time. May I ask, Madam Secretary, do we have anyone signed up currently? We do not have anyone signed okay. up. We did not have anyone signed up ahead of time. <laughs> if there is anyone here who wishes to speak on Bill 93-23, please come up to the table and have a seat. When it is your turn, state your name and address for the record. Remarks will be limited to two minutes. If you have more than two minutes to share, I'm going to ask you to submit your additional thoughts using our online testimony tool. Mr. Shire. Good evening. Uh, Mike Shire, I'm here on behalf of the Pension Oversight Commission. Uh, the commission did submit its uh, letter. Uh, there are obviously are some issues with the legislation that the commission highlighted in that letter. It does look like the amendments that are proposed tonight do take care of some of those issues, uh, but uh, there are still a few things in there that we understand the uh, administration and the uh, bargaining groups are still in the process of discussing, so there may be further amendments, but I'll stand for any questions that I can answer within the bounds of uh, the Pension Oversight Commission's meeting. Thank you. Mr. Spencer. Hi, um, I'm going to keep this brief. Um, I know there's amendments, so I don't know the full picture, but generally buying into a plan generally involves covering all of the costs, and I'm not so sure that that's the case, the way this is written. Um, and I guess I just end with this general guidance. Today's discretionary decisions become tomorrow's non-discretionary fixed costs. I've said it before, and I'm gonna keep telling you that. Keep that in mind when you deal with pensions. Thank you. Uh, while Mr. Atkinson prepares his remarks, is there anyone else? Last call for the public hearing on Bill 9323. This is a perfect time to come up and sit at the table. No, nope. Mr. Atkinson, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, for the record, O'Brien Atkinson, President of the Anne Arundel County Fraternal Order Police. Uh, council members, once again, thank you. Your support for our police officers is a model for other jurisdictions, and they should follow uh, the model that you all have presented. Uh, you all know there's a desperate need for police officers in Anamona County. It takes well over a year of training to get an entry-level recruit even minimally functional as a police officer. Our police department attempts to hire lateral officers, those that are already Maryland trained, certified, and experienced because they bring their training and experience to serve our county. And they do it within weeks of being hired. But the biggest difficulty we have in attracting these officers is that they start from scratch with their service time on pension. Bill 9323 was envisioned to help with this problem, and the FOP worked tirelessly to get a bill introduced like this one. I say like this one because this one is not very close to what we've actually fought for. This bill is more for show, we believe, uh, for lateral officers that wish to come here. It's so the county can say, we've done something. We're offering uh, this benefit. 
However, the benefit is no benefit at all. Uh, the county administration is asking for the benefit of getting trained and experienced police officers, but it is not willing to give them much of anything in return. The cost for those experienced officers to take advantage of this benefit could be as much as $40,000 or more. If the lateral even has that much money, which is doubtful, it would be more beneficial for an officer to just invest that money on their own. It may be true that the officer can pay that $40,000 over three years, but that's a $13,000 a year pay cut. This bill does nothing to help our recruiting as currently written. And how do we fix it? It's simple. Whatever the officer takes out of their old pension system, they bring into the new one. That is what the cost neutral, that is what cost neutral means to us. It is cost neutral to the officer and to the pension system. The officers still contribute their share into our system and county government still contributes their share to fund the system over the lifetime of the employees. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The public hearing on Bill 93-23 is now closed. Madam Secretary, please read the title of Bill number 93-23. Bill number 9323, an ordinance concerning pensions, participation, transferred service, employees retirement plan, fire service retirement plan, police service retirement plan. Is there any discussion before we go into the two amendments? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, please read amendment number one. Amendment number one, this amendment removes a requirement that a former participant be reemployed after January 1st, 2014 to return to participation in the fire service retirement plan or the police service retirement plan. Mr. Hunt, did you want to say a couple words? Uh, certainly, Madam Chair. Uh, this does remove the 10 year look back limit on uh, reemploying former fire and uh, police officers. Um, and this was one of the issues raised in the letter from the Pension Oversight Commission. And we would urge the council to adopt this amendment. Is there a motion to adopt? So move, Kevin. Is there a second? Rod being second. Is there any discussion on amendment number one? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, please call the roll on amendment number one. Ms. Hummer. Aye. Mr. Volke is absent. Ms. Fiedler. Aye. Ms. Rodvian. Aye. Ms. Ledbetter. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. And Ms. Pickard. Aye. Six in the affirmative. One absent. Amendment number one has been adopted. Madam Secretary, please read amendment number two. Amendment number two. This amendment adds an option for former participants in the fire service plan or police service retirement plan who are reemployed and return to participation in the plan to repay refunded contributions in a combination of a lump sum and payroll deductions. Mr. Hunt, this is your amendment. You have the floor. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, what this amendment does is it allows those officers who are trans fire um, members of the, who are transferring to the um, fire department from another jurisdiction to opt to uh, pay their contributions either as a lump sum payroll deductions or a combination of the two is there a motion to adopt amendment number two rod being so moved is there a second second is there any discussion on amendment number two from my colleagues i had a question um madam chair mr smith um for those that are opt into the program, let's say this pass, and they choose to do payroll deductions. Uh, is there a, but they never actually, let, let's say they quit in five years instead of whatever the time is to pay back into that program, what happens to the money that they paid into that program? Does that make sense? Is, uh, Ann Badowski, personal officer. Is your question about someone who is a redeposit, so yes. has left and come back? Yes. Um, we would have probably have to offset any contributions paid out to them for monies that they would have owed us for that service. Okay. So there's a, there was an offset. If they were to retire because it gave them enough service to retire, we could, and they didn't pay all the full redeposit, we could take it from their monthly benefit as a deduction until it's fully paid. I'm saying what if, what if they quit before they get to that point where they retire? Okay, and then if they were to terminate service and they had not, we would have to pay them and they were not vested, they would get out a payment of their 
contributions and yeah. interest, and we can deduct it from that. Right. Thank you. Seeing, a, and no, seeing no other comments, Madam Secretary, please call the roll on amendment number two. Ms. Hummer. Aye. Mr. Volke is absent. Ms. Fiedler. Aye. Ms. Radvian. Aye. Ms. Ledbetter. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. And Ms. Pickard. Aye. Six in the affirmative. One absent. Amendment number two has been adopted. Thank you. Bill number 93-23 will be heard on February 5th, 2024. Uh, Madam Secretary, please read the title of Bill number 94-23. Bill number 94-23, an ordinance concerning zoning, requirements for conditional uses, business complexes in a residential district. Ms. Fiedler, this is your bill. You have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. We discussed this bill at our last work session. Um, it is essentially a follow-up to Bill 1523 that this council passed related to uh, conditional uses associated with a property that provides first responder services as its primary function through the use of equipment and apparatus owned by a governmental entity or a volunteer organization. The bill before the council extends that um, to adjacent properties under the same ownership. Does the administration have any uh, comments at this time? Uh, no, Madam Chair. Just with me at the table is Lynn Miller from the Office of Planning and Zoning and Kelly Kenny from the Office of Law. We'll now open the public hearing. Oh, is there any discussion at this time? We'll now open the public hearing on Bill Number Ninety Four Twenty Three. Did we get? Do we have any um, one sign up ahead of time? Do we have any online testimony? You know the drill. We did receive uh, one submission through the online testimony tool, Madam Chair, members of the council. Everyone here received a copy of that via email, and it is included in that summary that's posted online. We did not have anyone sign up ahead of time. Is there anyone here who would like to speak on bill number 94-23? Seeing no movement in the audience, the public hearing on bill 94-23 is now closed. Madam Secretary, please read the title of bill number 94-23. Bill number 9423, an ordinance concerning zoning requirements for conditional uses, business complexes in a residential district. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, please call the roll on bill number 94-23. Uh, Ms. Hummer. Nay. Mr. Volke is absent. Ms. Fiedler. Aye. Ms. Radvian. Nay. Ms. Ledbetter. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. And Ms. Pickard. Nay. Three in the affirmative, three in the negative, one absent. Uh, bill number 9423 has been defeated. I'm not sure this is a record, but um, on this cold and very uh, wintry night, I hope everyone is very careful going home. Please be safe. May I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The County Council is now adjourned until February 5th, 2024. Please, please be safe in your journey home. Thank you so much.